Welcome to Old Guys Still Rock. Super grateful you gave us a look or a listen. We specifically developed this podcast for friends, or or soon to be friends, who are in the 40 plus category. This podcast is a platform to not only have your voices be heard, but also for others who are going through the same thing and know that they too aren't alone. Our topics may be business, topics may be entrepreneurship, our topics may be social, or our topics may be just everyday life. Whatever it is, we hope that you give it a share and leave us a comment. But most of all, if you want your voice to be heard, please leave us a comment on how to get a hold of you so you too can be an old guy that still rocks and help build our community. Until we speak again, stay safe, but most of all, God bless. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, where you're watching. One of the best podcasts in the world, at least in our minds. <laughs> Old guys still rock. Welcome back. I think we're in episode number 63 today. I, gosh, I just cannot believe it, man. It is amazing to me. So episode uh, 63, if this is your first time here, I am Blair Armstrong of Team Armstrong Cobalt Bankers. You kind of see behind me, I am a global luxury uh, specialist in the world of residential real estate here in the Coachella Valley. If you want to know what Coachella Valley is, it's basically from Palm Springs out to Indio. And if you don't know what that is, look it up on a map. And you're kind of like, oh, yeah, I know where that is. Hmm. And then on my right, a very good friend of mine for almost 30 years, if not 30 years, can't believe how far time has gone so much. But anyway, uh, with that being said, is uh, a good friend of mine for almost 30 years, <clears throat> Brent Wright of Brent Wright Incorporated, a man with multiple hats, uh, started with a body shop to detail shops to property management uh, to wellness centers. Uh, he is now have, has morphed himself and because of all of his experiences in his business that he's basically built from the foundation up is now holding uh, leadership and self-improvement courses. So again, it's just like, he's not a master of them all yet, but he's perfecting every single business. And again, this has been a course of almost, probably pretty darn close to 40 years now with all of this being built up. So it's been pretty impressive. So when you see us on here and you're like, who is this guy sitting with parts and his American flag in the back and da, da, da. <laughs> You might want to give him a shout because the guy is, is, has a ton of knowledge and has been through a lot of different avenues and sits in a lot of different seats. Even at one point, um, I don't know if you're still doing that anymore, but sitting on the board of your church. Yeah, so I'm uh, on the advisory council for the church uh, slash the school. Um, the school has two different boards that I'm a part of. Um, one of them is the uh, board that does all the fundraising for the church and school collaboration uh, to build out a new $35 million facility. Uh, so we're starting that process currently. Um, we The church has the property and the school will probably be able to get the money. So it's the perfect collaboration. They can't do without us. We can't do without them. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great thing. Uh, and, and sitting on the school board now for five years, uh, building out the school with the number of different folks, a uh, great team to work with. And uh, we've made a huge, huge impact in a lot of kids' lives and a lot of families' lives. So I'm uh, pretty blessed to be able to do that. Um, yeah, I, I one of my coaching sessions this morning, he's like, I don't know how you do everything you do. Tell me. And so we went down that road and it's interesting to... Uh, hear other people talk about it and hear other people talk about um, what they, what they see in me. Um, It's very humbling. Um, It definitely pulls on my, on my ego string a little bit and it Mm -hmm. definitely pulls on my heart string a lot. So Mm -hmm. um, I just feel very fortunate to be able to give back uh, in a way that makes a damn difference. You know, when you say that, and basically that kind of bleeds into what we're going to be talking about today with emotional intelligence, and that's going to be our topic today, guys. So mm-hmm. strap in and, and get ready for this. But um, 
And then, you know, don't forget if you were going through this and you want to go back and stuff, go ahead and hit that pause button, write that stuff down, leave us a comment on what your thoughts on that, what that thing is. Because typically we have four or five good golden nuggets uh, that no matter where you are at life should be able to help. But going back to what Brent has talked about in this kind of his re resume of stuff, there has to be a level of emotional intelligence and when I say that, it all kind of ties in, and you also said ego, right? Yeah. When you start getting, and I also will call this the Tiger Woods effect, you start doing some things, and you're kind of in that rhythm, and things are starting to happen, and it's really easy, and people are coming to you, and they're praising you. Your emotional intelligence say, man, I'm really good. And if you start believing that to a certain extent, right? Yep. Guy would be like, Whoa, 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 whoa. That's his, again, sometimes we're going to talk about God boom. here, but it's boom. He'll, he'll put you back down there. <laughs> knock you off the mountain. <laughs> knock you off the mountain a little bit. And, so, and that's where, you know, you're like, oh, FML, I might be in a bad streak of three or four bad things. Like, what happened? I was doing this good. I was doing this good. This good. It's like, I, when Brent says emotional intelligence, the thing that, that comes to my mind is, how am I getting better? but keeping my emotions in check. Yeah. And you sent me something, three things yesterday uh, through Instagram that you, that you saw that really tie into this emotional intelligence of kind of how, no matter where you are in life and the, the hurdles that you may have in your persona, mm -hmm. how to get through them. But could you share that with us of, of what you got and what you sent me? Yeah. So what I sent you was, uh, was a talk that Alex Hermosi was doing with another podcaster. And he said that the one thing that he has studied and sees in all successful people that he studies or interacts with is they have three things in common. Um, now you can go back to, uh, think and grow rich, right. By Napoleon Hill. And there's, that's a big, thick book on a lot of these things. So this isn't new information. It's just Alex is regurgitating this. Mm -hmm. um, very intelligent man, very successful man. Super. I follow him for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the key features um, of why he's so successful, and he will talk about this, is that he made his first million by himself. He made the other 21 million the next year by aligning with his wife. He was not as successful until he found the right partner. And so no different than me, I will give a lot of credit to my, my blessed, beautiful wife, April. Um, she drives me, she uh, focuses me. Um, she betters my life in so many ways. I can't even tell you, but Alex hats off to you, buddy, for recognizing that um, our, it even says it in the Bible, find a partner that will fulfill you, right? And so I think that's part of our situation. But back to this talk, um, I love our tangents, you know, because there's some yeah. nuggets in our tangents too, always, right? So, always, you know, man. Yep. Um, the three things that are, are common in successful people, that they have a superiority complex. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that they are better than anybody else. It's just that they go about things and they're like, I got this. I'm good. I'll get this done. Right. And, and it's um, a lot of people could take that, that uh, description, you know, to the side, they could just go sideways on it. Mm -hmm. Superiority complex typically is, is used as a negative connotation. And it means that people are better than others and feel they're better than others. Now, we talk about the on our podcast that we're only better than the 49 other Brents or Blairs or whoever that came before us, right? And so I think that's a superiority complex that Alex was talking about. The other one is a massive insecurity. It's, I'm going to fail, so I have to try harder. I have to have to do this. I have to try harder. And then the third one is they have impulse control. They, and in this con context, it was they go do big things without the distractions. 
So they go and he, he referenced a, a movie and you've probably seen this movie about the woman in the red dress across the street. Guy's walking down the street and he's focused on whatever it is he's focused on. And he sees this woman in the red dress across the street and her red dress is flowing in the wind. Right. And he's distracted. And then he can't focus on the prize of what he's trying to accomplish. And so what say you about those th three things? What, when I sent that to you, what did you think? What was your immediate response? What was your trigger? Okay, two seconds here. Hold on a second. So two, a couple of different things I want to go back to this is, is first and foremost, I want to go back because I think this has a big play with uh, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. You gave credit. Alex Ramosi did this. Uh, I've done it, you know, multiple episodes. You've done it in multiple episodes, but we give credit to our wives. Yeah. You and I were both married late in life. Mm -hmm. I was married once, um, you know, it didn't work <laughs> out. Same thing with, right. You know, so we've kind of been through this, right? Yeah, we both yeah. crash, crash and, and burn, burn right? crash and burn. Right. Now you get into this later in life. This is going to tie into what you're saying to it. And you live in this single life for a little bit. You might be in relationships, but it's not really a you until you get married. Mm -hmm. My belief. Uh, how, even though that April has helped you, Chrissy has helped me. How much of was it? How much of it is a struggle at times? Is because they're pushing you. Because they know you. They they know. Me, you. Mm -hmm. They they know that we have it in us to be better but we're fighting because it's coming from them. So my so, wife told me that last night. Yeah. She said that she was talking with one of her staff members about the mistakes that she made early on in our relationship. And that was exactly it was that she didn't push hard enough in the beginning. And, and no different than what you're just saying. Right. Yeah. So, but it's emotional. I and mean, that's where I said going back to emotional intelligence. It is, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's not letting your emotions get in the way. Again, what's, by the way, this stuff just comes to our brain. Mm -hmm. So this is why we have organic conversations like this thing. So hopefully somewhere along the line, what we just said and what we just gave you a mindset, this makes you different things, especially I'm running to more and more people have been married seven, eight years, nine years. And you're around that 50 year age mark, or maybe the 60 age mark, second marriage, maybe whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're coming into this and we're, we're taking our past and putting it into our present and our future to where realistically we're much more uh, emotionally uh, mature. And this is where emotional intelligence will come in. Yeah. And like Alex Hermosi said to it, Alex Hermosi uh, could have done very well without being married. Brent Wright mm -hmm. could have done very well without being married. Blair Armstrong could have done very well. But do you have that sounding part partner to full on trust and have someone be your mirror in so many different ways um, is to really be they become a catalyst in your life mm -hmm. uh, to, to do that stuff. So that's that's a big thing for you. So but going and I know that was a little bit of a side tal talent uh, tangent. Thank you very much. <laughs> I got you. I'm like, walk and chew gum, walk and chew gum, walk and chew gum. <laughs> um, but anyway, th those are the things that they have to, and, he, and you may not be married, but dude, that's where basically what Alex from is saying is we're, we're built to be this kind of like, we have to win. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do this, but being open to hearing different sides and listening to people when they're challenging challenging you so when brent says you know go make a damn difference after every one of our episodes it's a challenge to you yeah. are you going to be great um you know and you may not want to hear it that day or you may think that you're better than him and that goes back to a superiority part what we've talked superiority yeah. Yeah. um you know i think that i'm great well okay we're good now what? good so what are you doing with it how are you going to get better because no one's perfect. We mm -hmm. always talk about pursuing perfection and selling an excellence. And so that perfection is an unending race. Uh, you guys got to get to know this. And I understand your life is perfect and stuff like that, but it's, it's not. So let's be real. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to, to have little potholes and 
and, and hurdles in your life, but you keep choosing, you keep chasing perfection and being excellent. And one thing that I, that stuck out to me in this superiority artery type of thing, which I always thought, you know, people are like, Oh, he's just, so, he just thinks he's so superior. Well, why shouldn't we, you know, we're, we're made one of a kind. Yes. We're, we might look alike and we might have similar traits, but we're all of us are specially made. Mm -hmm. None of us have the same, you know, complete same DNA and all this stuff. So we're all different. So yes, if you're made special, you should think that you're good. Now, how you use it, that's an emotional intelligence. Yeah. Right? Yep. You cut me off at any time, dude. I'm oh, okay no. With that. No, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but anyway, with that is this like, okay. And so then another word that I've uh, really looked into a lot lately, which has really changed my mind because and I've used it so much. Oh, the guy just thinks he's so righteous. Mm -hmm. Well, we've taken these words superiority and righteous and we've really flipped them to give this negative connotation because really what I'm really seeing is the people that have really come that way is because they know at that present time, they're not measuring up to what that person is. I and mean, they're like, I know that I'm better than them, but right now they're better than me. Well, and so go ahead. Let's, let's, let's take this to another level. So let's just suppose that, you're in a war mm -hmm. and the guy next to you is in the war with you and you're supposed to be defending him and he's supposed to be defending you against the enemy. Do you want a weak minded, weak egoed, lackluster individual next to you? Or do you want a, or do you want a guy that thinks he can kick tail and take names and he's the best of the best next to you. I want that guy. Yeah. I want the guy that, that knows in his heart and his soul that he's the best and he's going to go out and win and that he's going to save me. And he wants me to be the same for him. Now we don't, we don't live in a war at least, most of you don't think you live in a war every day. I believe I live in, I, I'm, I go to war every day. I go to war on, on the Brent that was yesterday, right? I go to war on my ego. I go to war on creating humility, creating a difference in me. Now, do you want somebody next to you that's superior? Or do you want somebody who's just, eh, okay. And that's what we, I think we even talked to, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but you going back to using that example, which is great, right? The big word right now is equality. If you're ever the same, we're, we're not all equal. Sometimes you're going to be a winner. Sometimes you're going to be a loser. And we've talked about that and it's okay. Yep. The point of what you just brought up, but that was a great picture for, for my mind. And hopefully for everyone who's watching his mind is if you're in the trenches, you're going to be really good at something. And that other person is going to be really good at something instead of saying, well, you know, fighting over differences. Well, I can't do that because he's better than me. Rely on that resource to mm -hmm. get, to get better. And I also, this kind of pulls me into the temperature that we're having in this world right now is like, if you're not on this side, then you can't be, you can't be with me. And if you're on this side, you can't be with me. And it's just all this bickering, but realistically, if you put everything down and everyone just said, what do you really want right now? Well, we've talked about this many times. I want to have a good family life. I want to have a good job. I want to make as much money as possible. And I want everyone to get along and I want to love. Pretty much everyone wants, to, is, wants the same thing. Yeah. But we take this connotation of that because if this person believes in maybe one or two things that I don't believe in too, that they have a superiority context or, or complex and uh, these guys are, they're more, they're moralistically unsound. Come on. And that's what I'm saying is this, it comes down to emotional intelligence and the, the manipulation that we're seeing in front of us is completely different. So what did Brent started off this, uh, you know, a couple minutes ago saying how it's okay to have a superior complex. 
it's okay to have security insecurities, but mm-hmm. by learning from Alex Hermosi, learning from his wife, Brent, learning from his wife, uh, me learning from my wife, but having those insecurities and then having your partner help you get over those insecurities so you can help get better. Well, I don't even think you want to get over the insecurities. I think the insecurities well, are a driver. Like, so my insecurity is that I'm going to be homeless again. Mm-hmm. That's a driver every day for me. I think, but yes, but when you get one rid of one insecurity, it doesn't get, it doesn't leave your mind. Right. Right. I hear what you're saying. Work, work through it is what you're saying. But, but for me, I got to work through it. It has to be top of mind and I use it as a tool to get there. Yeah. We have a, uh, you just spurred it. I went, snuck out in the golf course yesterday and right before I went out, talked to one of our listeners in the weeds a little bit, mm-hmm. but, he, but they pulled up their big boy pants and we talk about it. And a couple of days before I'm like, man, what's going on? How's, how's your world? How's, how's the job? And, and, uh, they were, you know, they were kind of like second guessing some stuff and, and, uh, and they put on rose covered glasses. Oh, everything's good, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I knew, um, uh, kind of by the tone that, there were some struggles there. Yeah. Anyway, on the way out to the thing, they're like, you know what, brother? It's a little rough. <laughs> um, but, you know, I thought of mine and just kind of he copped to it. And what I was trying to, what I, what, what it was interesting to me to stand up, <laughs> I'm going to toot our own horn for the moment. Like, because I just need to really remember what those guys and old guys still rock say. And sometimes you just have to power through it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, listen, man, Brett and I have been through the weeds and that's the reason why we've, we've put up this podcast. We have, we have won huge and we have lost massively, Bigger. <laughs> massively. Look yeah. the gutter multiple times. We still have a long ways to go. And I'm sure that some of you are watching this. Yeah. You may be on paper a little bit better than us, but we've tasted life. We're sharing our experiences. So when you go through this, that you know that you're not the only one through that. Mm-hmm. So for the listener that said that yesterday, we're in the weeds with you, regardless of that you might feel that you're in a desert island, but we're in the weeds with you. Just keep pushing and knowing that go back and listen to our episodes and we'll help out everything that you have a problem with. I'm oh, just kidding. But anyway, <laughs> there's some good, but I mean, that's kind of true in the same sense. Is well, there's helped some our good, problems. Helped our problems. And it helps us to get better at the show is again, is, we're not some gurus. We're not a Tony Robbins. We're not an Ed Milet and stuff like this, but we are people that you can reach out and touch and actually call and get a hold of us and, and do all mm-hmm. those different things and talk through some different situations. Yeah. Again, emotional intelligence. That took us a while. We had there. If you would have talked to Brett and I probably seven, eight, nine years ago, uh, and you had a problem like on you, bro. Um, good luck. And, and see you later. Mm-hmm. Um, kick, or kick rocks, kick rocks, man. I'm like, <laughs> I, I've got enough problems of my own. I don't need you. And if you can't figure it out, then you're just stupid. That's mm-hmm. not the way that we're supposed to be. That's that's why again, emotional intelligence. It took us a while to get here and do these different things. And I know this is in an essence, a kind of a, a ramble, but this is the things that these guys that are giving you this information, it's okay to put down your shields. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be, have humility. Uh, that takes a lot for me to say, mm-hmm. to have those last couple of worlds to be vulnerable and humility. I, I, my battle, those are my battles. Yeah. I don't want to fail. I don't want to get my ass kicked on, on a, on a Monday and, or go through it or have a bunch of things happen. You feel like you're going in the right direction. And also on the bottom falls out and mentally try to go through that again and keep a smile on your face. Mm-hmm. So do we all go through it? Absolutely. But sometimes you feel by your, by yourself and, Brent has been a good friend of mine for 30 years. He can, he can tell when I'm struggling. Even if I don't talk to him, he's like, okay, dude, what's up? I just feel it in the universe. Yeah, buddy. I can feel it. And, and I can't go to him anymore. I'm like, oh, we're good. And we like, F you, bro. Come on, mm-hmm. let's go. But those so, are the things. So go ahead. Yeah. Speaking of that. So day 18 of 75 hard. I'm in, the thick, go. I'm in the thick of it. Yep. And the last couple of days have been those like, I'm tired. My wife, she's like, I'm tired. Yeah. 
and I'm tired of drinking water and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired of eating just massive amounts of protein for fuel. And, you know, and the part of the emotional intelligence is, is that, and 75 heart helps you with this. And that's, by the way, that's why I keep reaching over and drinking this. Cause I have three quarters of a gallon left to do today. So, um, part of the emotional intelligence is that most people are influenced by their feelings instead of being influenced by facts. And so 75 hard helps with that because it, no matter how you feel, you still have to do it even so you don't fail. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it helps you keep your ego in check. It helps you keep your feelings in check. And it helps you to develop and, and work with emotional intelligence. Um, you have to submit your feelings to facts and that's, what's going to drive success for you. You cannot just wear your heart on your sleeve, bleed down your arm and expect everybody else to clean up the mess. Mm -hmm. Right. You just cannot. And then the next piece of it is humility. You have to keep your ego under control and have humility to be able to make proper decisions. And I think that again, 75 hard does that because at the end of the day, you have nothing left in the tank, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did the live hard program. You didn't have anything left in the tank for a year. Yeah, I mean, but I think that's the big thing because we think that we've, you know, I know we've gone back to this multiple times and it's like we think that going back to the superior complex is like we feel that we always kind of hit this platform like, okay, we're good. I, I don't, I don't need to, I can check out now. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more left over and, you know, you're going through 75 hard. I'm kicking my arse in workouts lately and I don't know why. I mean, literally yeah. like I am soaking wet gas and i'm like what am i doing that Why? picture was pretty cool by the way good job good job well it's just but you know but you sit there your question is this like why and then and then i'm like well, why not well why not i mean it's like mm -hmm. you're 55 years old you want to sit back and then complain uh, yeah i hurt my shoulder hurts my my freaking hips hurt everything and, uh, every hurt, everything hurts <laughs> But it's like I can still do it, and I just don't. I don't want to sit back. There's other people that I look around. I'm like, dude, let's go, bro. I mean, and, and it's not, it's not so much about being physically fit. It's mm -hmm. being, it's being um, complacent. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, I got, I got humbled on the golf course yesterday, and I got frustrated. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sitting there like, why are you frustrated, dude? You're not practicing. You know, you're not out there. You're not, you're not hitting a thousand golf balls a day and you're playing once or twice uh, a month right now. So how, how could you be mad now mm -hmm. if you're in, and I'm using that as an analogy, if you're not constantly in it, then you don't have any worm to complain. Yeah. And if you're not constantly, you know, if you want to check out because, Hey, I've, I've worked 30 years and this is my life. And now I'm just going to go cruise control on you, man. Mm -hmm. I'm just, 75 hard did that, the live hard program to it. You, being with you doing these podcasts, I can't picture myself turning it off right, anymore. Mm -hmm. I'll find uh, something and yeah, I mean, I'll, we'll take little breaks. I'm not going to work 24 seven. That's not me. It's, you know, Brent doesn't like to, you know, I jokingly say Brent doesn't like vacation. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Hawaii in, in 30 days. Those are the things. But when I come back from Hawaii, bro, watch out, homie. I mean, we are, I always said this too the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I was talking to my team. I'm like, I just feel something's coming. And I go, I know it's coming because, and they're like, well, how do you know it's coming? I said, cause I'm going on vacation. Mm -hmm. I've got two appointments today. Actually one today, one tomorrow um, for listings. We just put, we're about to put, we have one in escrow. We put another one in there and they're all going to basically come to fruition the time that I get on an airplane. Mm -hmm. So you start freaking out, like, okay, how am I going to enjoy this? Well, you've got a good team. You've got good people to surround you. You've built up great relationships with colleagues that if anything really needs to be done, 
even though that I'm thousands of miles away, I know I can get handled. So the good thing that I want to do is I've got to let these people know on the appointments that yes, we can do this. Yes, it'd be, here's how we're going to do it. I'm just going to let you know I'm going to be gone for 10 days, but with this world of technology, uh, we can get this done. Blair, five years ago, would probably would have not said something and tried to kind of snake through it and not be transparent about it. And that's humility about, you know, kind of being well, that's, like, I'm going to it. That's the reward of humility is right? you're attracting the right people around you and you're attracting the right situations. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you weren't, if you didn't have any humility about it, if you didn't mm -hmm. work being transparent, mm -hmm. then then there's no reward. Are there, are there rewards a kick in that in the tail feathers? Right. I mean, that's right. just the reality of it. Right. So so having humility, having transparency, that is the reward. Mm -hmm. And you're going to attract the right people, the right situations and the right uh, results, too. Yeah, and it just, again, emotional intelligence, and I know we keep bringing that, we're banging this home. Um, I think I feel like we've missed one point off of Alex's talk the other day. Okay. So what, so you, give me so, the points again. So, yeah, so uh, successful people, superiority complex. Okay. Massive insecurity. Okay. And they have impulse control. They're not distracted by the noise. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Being focused, going back to what you said earlier about the person with the red dress, right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Being focused on that. Um, staying focused, putting your blinders on, don't go squirrel moment. Da -da -da, squirrel. Da -da -da, squirrel. Mm -hmm. And being focused in that. But even if you are, I mean, this goes back to, I mean, I'm pulling in another nugget that we've learned over the course of time is yes, you're gonna, there's points of distraction, but what is going to be that trigger? Come back and like, okay, I'm back in. I'm back in. Yeah. How is that going to be a trigger in your mind to be to do that way um, for entrepreneurs or people that are consuming or are really, really pursuing some, some stuff. Uh, we live in the future. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not so much in the present. Yeah. It's just not a good thing. It's not. <laughs> Guilty. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't care what's happening right now. I want to, that's what I'm worried about over there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, those are some of the things is, is, is having. So when that impulse control, what Brent is talking about, Alex, which Alex from Mercy is talking about, I'm sure that a lot of you guys have, have heard about this. And if you haven't, now you have, uh, is having a Again, trigger. It's, not, it's just a repeat of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Great right. book. I'm two thirds of the way through it. It's one of the, it's the second book that I've been reading on, on the 75 hard program. Um, and so definitely get that book and dissect it and follow, follow it. I believe that's what Alex is talking about. So. Yeah. And I think, but, but yes, absolutely. But it's also, yes. So if that's your trigger, if think and grow rich is your trigger, think and grow rich is your trigger. If Alex Hermosi is your trigger, if Brett Wright mm -hmm. is or Blair Armstrong is, whatever that trigger is, it's had that trigger sitting in your mind. It's like, Hey, when I start going sideways, boom, what did they say? Or what did this book say? How do I pull back into it? And it's again, Everyone loses focus. It just happens because there's so much going on to it, but, but it's happening. It. Create a moment. trigger to center mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. To center you, create that trigger. I do that morning in my devotionals, man. And when I'm sitting in the, in, the, in the morning before I start my day and we're doing devotionals and stuff like that, it's like my brain starts to, my brain starts to drift into the day. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you got to get this done. I'm like, no, nope. okay. dang it. You said, this is his time right now. This is his time. Pull back. And it's, different thought process why but i'm just saying is what regardless of what your beliefs are your mind wants to pull you away from what's most important at that at that time mm -hmm. and what's most important that time is what's in front of you yeah. that's what's live in, on the, side live in of the you. present yeah. yeah one day i'll be there so the the part about insecurity is a lot of achievement in successful people is fueled by insecurity. Mm -hmm. I'll never be good enough. So I have to try harder. I'll never win at this. So I have to try harder. I'll never make this person happy. So I have to try harder to make this person happy. So some of the things my, my point with this is, and I think Alex's point was, is some of these things that a lot of people look to as faults, you can use as fuel. And I've done it. You know, I, 
We talked about this several times. You know, I drive past the truck every morning that I used to live in. That's an insecurity and it's driving me every day to not live in that truck ever again and make sure my family never lives in that truck. There's plenty of that. I mean, you know, you and I have always said we're one decision away from pushing a shopping cart down the street. Yep. I mean, it's, it's reality. We see it all the time. And, um, so it's, it's controlling that mm -hmm. it's understanding how, when you do have ad adversity, uh, which everyone has uh, multiple times throughout their life is knowing that I'm going to get through this and I have resources to get me through it and not succumbing to the thought. I'm like, oh, here I go again. I sucked on this one. I, I really effed up. And now I, you know, now I'm just going to, I guess I'm just not cut out for this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, most of you guys know that, you know, we follow, I mean, Brent is in, in Arte with Ed Milet and, and uh, Andy Frisella, and mm -hmm. here you got the guys, both of them multi multi millionaires. Um, but you have on, these guys. coming up on my six year anniversary. Are you really? Yeah, that's awesome. But you know, you listen to Andy; he's built this company out of nothing, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Dude, every day I want to quit. <laughs> I want to burn it to the ground. I burn it to the ground." Yeah. Days like this, like, I was just that way a couple of days ago. I'm like this, dude, what am I doing? You just have to power through it, right? It's just yeah. like a I bring out the gas can or bring out the matches. I'm like, okay, nah. And it's actually kind of goes back to this thing that you see sitting behind me, this little statue that's right over my shoulder. I think it's my left shoulder, but it looks my your right shoulder on there. But here you got servant leadership. And mm -hmm. those of you who don't know that, it's basically uh, Jesus watching, washing Peter's feet. And and it's a symbol for everybody. And I know it has some Christianity stuff behind it, but the point of the point of it trying is, is kind of the same reason we do this podcast is that you're not in this alone. And then if you have that servant mindset that Brent has grown into, that I've grown into, that Alex Ramosi has grown into, that Tony Robbins has grown into, that all your guys, your, your leaders, which they were created leaders, uh, have this mindset how am i going to take my wisdom my knowledge my humility my emotional intelligence and share that with somebody else so they can and here's the hard part going back to your humility so they can be better than me mm -hmm. yep and we're in this world of competition but how can i make somebody better than me all of the greats talk about it tony robbins talks about um Whenever he gets on stage, he goes through this process and almost every time before he gets on stage, he's like right on the edge of puking because he's so nervous about getting, and he's been on stage a thousand times. I mean, this guy changes the lives of three to 10,000 people in an audience in a sitting, right? And he's like one of the best in the world, but he has humility. He checks his ego at the door. He understands that he's only as good as the talk he's about to give, not the talk that he gave. And that's why he gets nervous. Can I pull this off? Can I do this? He's got a massive insecurity. Can I deliver the goods to these people? 10,000 people are here for me to help them change their lives. Can I do this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it did that that comment triggered so much in there because that's where we get held up uh with is like can i do it i don't know am i am i a facade am i fake and mm -hmm. am i this but you have a guy that has turned millions of people's lives around yeah not any questions still questions himself is better but the people that he's helping they're helping him get better every day mm -hmm. tony robbins gets better every time he goes on stage same thing with this i mean we can look at that's us i mean if we went back and look at episode one to cut, uh, episode number 63 yeah you know, we've had some hurdles here and there but realistically we've gotten better every time that we've come on here and so that's the constant movement behind there so and i don't know what, about you but every week i'm like can we pull the rabbit out of the hat? Can we pull this off again? I'm that, you know? Absolutely, man. I'm like, okay, <laughs> have, we, you know, have, we, have we plateaued or do we keep pushing through this? Do we do, what do we look at at episode? Are we going to get to episode 100 or are we not? 
Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just felt like I just sound like Vince Vaughn on Wedding Crashers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not going to go down that path. I'm like, yeah, you want to mess around? Is like you, you know. Yeah. Anyway, before that, but that's the thing is, it's like you're always questioning. Okay, do we feel it? Are we reaching enough people? We are get, we making a difference? Are we making a difference? But if we quit, then we succumb to what everything that we said not to do. So mm-hmm. if we get 20, 30, 50, 100, sometimes episodes, whatever, then it is what it is. But um, we're going to keep trying. We're going to keep pushing. We keep putting every stuff with us. We do get comments back that you like to hear what we have to say. And so we always yeah. say until you tell us to F off and you guys are, <laughs> you guys are horrible, we're going to keep doing this. Yeah. Um, and going from there. And then um, you know, I think one of the only big things that, uh, which is our next move that Brent and I've talked about a lot. We've got our swag. Now we've got sweatshirts mm-hmm. and t-shirts out there. We encourage you to, to leave episodes on there, but it's to actually get people on this stuff too. Cause yes, I know sometimes we seem a little bit more now and it's like, these guys are so boring sometimes. Oh, well, that's maybe what we think, but um, is to get people on here and share their well, experiences. We don't know Cause we don't have any feet. You guys aren't giving us feedback. I mean, we get it. We get the, you know, we get, uh, the people that do comment and thank you for that. But, um, you know, share, um, if we're, if we're triggering you, uh, in a way that doesn't feel comfortable, we want to hear about it. Yeah. You know, uh, Betsy Meyer, you're almost done with 75 hard. And I know you listen to us because you say, thank you every week for the shout out. There's a seat right over here girl. Mm-hmm. And I know you're coming back to the <laughs> desert pretty soon. So, or you can do it remotely, whatever. Yeah. Uh, we get yeah, comments, you- from, comments from Andrea. We get, uh, you know, Kyle texts me and says, yeah. thank you. You know, things like that. So from Gigi Matacos and the, mm-hmm. the Kemba Cumbers and you know, those, those other guys, you know, everyone that we've had on there. So those are the things that we're talking about. So I know that some different people watch this. If you have seen it, um, and you haven't commented, please just comment. Just, I mean, really, listen, tell us what you really feel is not going to hurt our feelings. Yeah. Uh, if you want to say something mean, that's okay. Just back it up with your reasoning. And not, we're not going to sit there and debate you. We just want to know why you feel that way. But also uh, what you got out of this, what golden nugget is really going to be your catalyst to get to that next level of, of leadership today? What is going to help? What did we tell you today or what do we – when it say we tell you, what did we share with you today that is going to increase your emotional intelligence to be a better leader? Because as mm-hmm. we talked about last week, everyone is, a, I don't, maybe it wasn't last week, but everyone is, is, has a capability to be a leader. Everyone is expected to be a leader in a different way. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to use this episode to become a better leader? And, and better and, yet, better yet, give us some, some subjects that you want to hear about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're happy to go down that road and chat about those. Mm-hmm. Um, these, uh, these subjects come to us um, by different catalysts, different triggers every mm-hmm. week. And uh, we talk through a couple of them. And sometimes I got to pull Blair to the right and <laughs> pull me to the right. And, you know, we, <laughs> we meander through this uh, to try to create uh, content that, uh, that the bulk of you are experiencing because you're in similar positions, mm-hmm. similar age groups, entrepreneurship. Um, again, we're, we're just here to try to, to create some triggers um, to spark interest and to spark uh, discussion really. Yeah. And you know, the best thing about this episode is hmm. that we gave April 45 minutes. Amen to that. Amen. She'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> but you, you better, go. but you better get it posted so that way she can uh, so I use, get it, on, I use it today for her workout. Right. So I got a couple of things on there. What time is your workout? Uh, we usually work out at five. So oh, yeah, I'll have it up by then. We'll be good. Cool. We'll plug this out. So anyways, final thoughts for you, my dude. Just continue, continue, continue to go make a damn difference for you and your community. That's all I ask. Yeah. Yeah, and in different words, what Brent just said is stop standing in the mud and figure out how to become a catalyst. And if you can't figure it out, let us know how we can maybe spur we'll some you. different things in there. You know, not going to cost you anything. Um, first session's free. Then after that, then you have to give us your first one. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. 
Yeah, just like the drug dealer says, first yeah. taste free after first that. It's gonna free. Cost you. <laughs> I am the candy man. Yeah, uh, anyway, right. man, guys, thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, remember, if you haven't done so yet and you've watched this episode or the past episodes, we have 62 other great episodes that are on there. Uh, but if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Better yet, especially through the YouTube, is hit that notification bell so when we do put out new episodes, uh, they're there right away. Mm -hmm. Most of all, since we are again, and I know that I said this at the beginning of uh, of our episode, we are not a monetary podcast at all. And so mm -hmm. that means was we have no sponsors and we have no advertisers. And so getting the message out really, really depends on you. So be bold, be catalyst, share this episode with just one person this week. And let us know who you shared it with, and we will send you either a T-shirt or a hat or both. But really, mm -hmm. just just share with one person, not throwing it on Facebook to 100. Literally take the link through YouTube, which we supply on Facebook and or Spotify. One of the two is like Instagram, everything. Instagram, yep. whatever it is. Just take it and say, hey, I've been listening to these guys. I feel like they have something good to say or listen to these yo-yos, whatever you want to say. Just share it with one person and tell us uh, who you shared it with, and then we'll go from there. That's it. Yep. So, so guys, that's it for me. Stay safe. Thank you. And uh, stay safe. And I can't even talk now. Stay safe. God bless. We'll talk to you guys next week. Take care.